Welcome to this, our three-part series that takes a look at reaction kinetics, topic number 16. Let's start by considering a, a generic reaction. Uh, what I mean by that is sort of a general reaction. So I have A molecules of A and B molecules of substance B, and they react to produce substance C. We define the rate law expression, so we can define the rate of this reaction as a constant times the concentration of A to some exponent times the concentration of B to some exponent. This forms what we call the rate law expression. You'll notice that it doesn't really, the coefficients here don't appear in the rate law expression. Now, so this would refer to the, the rate. This part of the expression um, refers to some change in concentration over some change in time. K is called the rate constant. We'll look a little bit more closely at that in our final program on this series. This rate constant is affected by features such as the, the nature of the reaction and the temperature that the reaction is carried out at. A and B refer to their concentrations and these things, M and N, values up here, these are experimentally determined um, exponents. Let's look at a, uh, what these exponents could possibly be. Um, now, while they can take on many values in higher level courses of chemistry, we're going to focus on exponents that can have the value of 0, 1, or 2. A zero exponent has no effect on the rate, meaning if I change that particular concentration, the rate is unaffected. A first order or exponent of one indicates a directly proportional effect, meaning that if I doubled a concentration, I would double the rate. And finally, an exponent of two indicates a squared, sometimes called an exponential, effect on the rate of the reaction. As I mentioned, it can take on many values, but these are the three that we're primarily interested in. We're going to take now a look at some experimental data to see how we can determine what these exponents are. So here I have a reaction that has three reactants, A, B, and C, that I can cover all of the cases. So A is raised to some exponent we don't know, B is raised to some exponent that we don't yet know, and finally substance C is raised to some exponent that we don't know. The first thing I want to do is let's try to isolate what is the effect of substance A. So what I want to look for trials where only a changes. So I'm going to look through the experimental runs here and I would probably compare 1 and 2 because A is doubled, B remains the same and so does C. So I can see here that I've doubled the concentration of A. An examination of the rate by taking this value and dividing by this one, I also see that it is increased by a factor of two. This indicates a directly proportional relationship. So I can now go back and say that m, the exponent for a, must be one. Now, let's look at what that would look like in a couple of different graphs. One would be if I was to plot the um, rate of the reaction versus various starting concentrations of a, I would find a line, straight line, sloping up to the right. That would indicate a proportional relationship. So if I doubled A, I would double the rate. Another graph that would give the same information were to, if I was to plot the concentration of A versus time and follow it in a single experiment, what I would notice is the rate of the reaction would start off fairly quickly and then slow down as time goes on in a curve that would indicate a, or suggest at least, a reaction order of one. Now let's take a look at 
B. Again, I want to find only the concentration of B is changing. So an examination of these might suggest here that if I was to compare, let's say, experiment number one with number four, A has remained the same, B has doubled, P has, uh, C has remained the same. So going from here to here, I've seen a doubling in the concentration of B, and yet if I look here at this, I can see that's gone up more than two times. In fact, 0 0.0064 divided by that would indicate a four-fold increase in the concentration. Now, a four-fold indica indicates a squared relationship. I doubled the concentration, yet it went up four times. Now, graphically, what that would look like if I was to plot the rate versus the concentration of B, I would get a graph that would be curving or exponential, falling sort of like a parabola. And also, if I was to plot the concentration of B versus time, it would follow a similar pattern of going downward, but the effect of the change in concentration would be much more dramatic, much steeper and much quicker changes. And finally here, in substance C, I want only C to be changing. So again, I'm going to try to examine uh, what that would be, and I would think it looks like comparing 2 with 3, does it? Because A is the same, B has remained the same, but I can see here a, a tripling of the concentration. And if I look at the rates, no change. So that no change that occurs tells me that the exponent then for P is 0. What that would look like on a rate versus concentration graph would be simply a horizontal line. No matter what the concentration, the rate remained unaffected. And over here on a concentration versus time graph, that would again be a straight line, but sloping straight down. So these are all various ways of communicating what the potential reaction orders can be. Now we'll return to the rate law and right now write down what we know. So the rate of this particular reaction is some constant times the concentration of A to the exponent 1 times the concentration of B squared. And C is dot affect the rate of the reaction. This has an overall reaction order of 3. I get that by adding together these two exponents. Now, let's go a little bit further now and try to figure out what is the value of the constant. So again, we have that the rate of this reaction is K, concentration of A, concentration of B. I want to isolate for K, so that suggests I can take the rate divided by the concentration of A times the concentration of B squared. And that will then give me the rate constant. Now, the values that I can use can be any one of these trials. So I can choose any row from up here and substitute those values into this expression to determine what the constant is. So I'm going to use the first trial conditions. And I have for that the rate, so point zero. 0, 1, 6, and I'm going to show you the units as well as we go through this. So that's moles per decimeter cubed. And on the bottom, the concentration of A and the concentration of B squared. So I'll just do the math part first. I'll take this divided by this and this quantity squared. And with that, 0, 0, 1, 6, essentially divided by 0, 0.02 cubed. And now the unit part. So let's look at simplifying that. Now on the bottom, I'm going to have mole and mole squared. 
so that'll be mole to the third. Similarly, decimeters to the minus three and decimeters to the minus three squared gives me decimeters to the minus nine on the bottom. Solving for the math, putting that in, you'll get around 200. The units, that's moles to the one minus three. So that'll be moles to the minus two. Minus three minus minus nine gives me decimeters to the sixth, seconds to the minus one. And that's what the constant is. Now these units here change with the order of the experiment. So as these exponents up here change, the overall order of the reaction changes, you'll see that these units change. And they can be worked out if you work through them very carefully. And just make sure you handle the exponents appropriately as I did in this step. So rather than memorizing some formula for the units, just be careful with your substitution and pay attention to the overall reaction order. In our next program, we'll take a careful look at something called reaction mechanisms.